when, when I'm traveling sometimes, you know, I'd be on tour or whatever, first thing I do, get off the plane, go straight to the supermarket or health food store, and I'll get a, a Mediterranean salad of some sort, if it's summery, in a warm weather, a block of tofu, and, and hummus. And I'll just go back to the hotel room, I'll open it up, I'll chop the tofu on top of the salad, I'll put the hummus on it, and that's it. That's my lunch. And for dinner, it'll just be one of the prepared soups, you know, from Naked Naturals or whatever, you know, the companies that do it, like a plant-based soup. And I'll just put frozen peas with it, and that's my meal. Costs you like 10 bucks. So there's nothing, right? Super cheap, and yet high plant protein, high carbohydrate, high antioxidant, cheapest chips, and available everywhere. So there's no excuse to, you know, to not be able to eat well, even when you're traveling. And that's really changed for me over the last 20 years because I've traveled a lot. And I've really noticed how easy it is now to eat well when you travel. And that doesn't mean having to buy some sexy plant-based burger. No, it doesn't mean that. It means just actually eating stuff that's easily available. So, but hunter-gatherers, they mostly eat meat. I heard this one, but didn't we just, you know, eat meat all the time? Well, no, it's a myth. For hunter-gatherers, the majority of their calories came from plant foods. The majority of all the calories that, get, that any hunting, hunting gathering population gets comes from plants. Meat is just too unpredictable. Humans might be more appropriately described as starchivores rather than carnivores. Starchivores. This is only a biological anthropologist saying this. 